Y'all, January was wild for me. Like, I've never been so busy in my whole life. But now that it's officially February, that means it's time for a wrap up. Hi, hello, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alex, and today is my January wrap up. So I'm going to talk about all the books I read in January. And let me tell you, I didn't get as much reading done as I really wanted. It's been a really wild month. First off, I just got a ton of freelancing work, which was super exciting and in the same breath, super terrifying because I've never had so many contracts before. And I was really tired and really overworked, but I was just so grateful for all of it at the same time, if that makes any sense. So I didn't get as much personal reading done as I wanted, and then I got sick, like with a cold and stuff, and just life in general has been a little hectic getting started into the new year. Also last week, um, I mentioned I had some issues getting books from my library. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit as we get into it. But before we start, make sure you hit all the buttons down below so you know when I'm posting. I post every week. And all I do on this channel is talk about books. So if you like listening to people talk about books, here I am every week doing just that for you. So without any more further ado, let's get into it. Oh, little preface. If you want to watch the January maybes, you can go do that. But um, it was kind of everywhere. And by the time that the end of December came, I had a really good idea of what I wanted to read. I was like, okay, this is what I want. And then I got on my library, literally none of the books I wanted were available. <laughs> I picked out like three and they weren't available. And I'm, I don't buy books typically. And there was one book in particular that I just really wanted to read. It was Show Me Sir by Sunny DeSoto. I could not find this book anywhere. There were no e-copies. Um, the only place I could find to buy it was through Amazon and I had to buy the hardcover and it was going to cost me like $25 and you guys, I just could not justify spending the money because I'd never heard of this writer. I'd never heard anything about this book. The reviews were okay, but not like terrific. And I was like, I just can't spend the $25 on this book, not knowing anything about the author or anything. I wasn't really willing to take the gamble. So I shelved it and I was like, whatever. And if you watched last week's episode, you'll know that I put um, the LJ Shen book on hold at the library, fully expecting to get it for January. And it literally just came in this last week. So I didn't have time to read it for January. I have it in my possession. That doesn't mean I'm gonna get, get to it, but yeah. So my whole general setup for January just like didn't work. Like everything was working against me. So I got what I could and then coupling that with how busy I was, I'm just surprised I got any reading done at all, honestly. Anyway, let's start. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm rambling. The first book I read in January was The Girl in Red by Christina Henry. Okay, I love Christina Henry. She writes really dark um, fairy tale retellings. And this one centers around Little Red Riding Hood. It's very different than what I was expecting. Because in the past, I've read Christina Henry's books. I read Alice, and it is a dark fairy tale retelling of Alice in Wonderland. And it really is like a fairy tale. Like, there's a lot of um, mythical type things happening in there and there's a really nice blend of like alternate reality and this reality this book is really more like sci-fi um apocalypse survivalist type story than the other books of hers that i read so i was a little um surprised when i started reading it it didn't disappoint so we have our main a uh, female character, she's in college living with her parents and a pandemic hits. And it's basically like a new strain of flu, which I found very like interesting. This was written in 2019, so it's like predates COVID and stuff like that, but it's still like, you know, got, got me in it for a minute. Basically everyone goes into quarantine and everything starts shutting down and uh, anarchy, basically. 
um, pandemonium, if you will, and they start sending people to camps, quarantine camps is what they call them. Well, um, our main character, Red, um, is a really big movie buff, and she obviously doesn't want to go to the quarantine camps because she's like, that sounds like a horrible idea, being stuck in a pen with like a bunch of other people under the government's control. No, thank you. So she decides she's going to go to her grandmother's house, and she kind of, her grandmother lives like off grid. She's kind of like a homesteader, I guess you would say. So Red, in the first part of this book, is trying to convince her mom, her dad, and her older brother, like, we need to go we need to make it there before things really start happening. And that is what the basis of our story is, is Red and her family trying to get to grandmother's house to find like sanctuary from the pandemic and everything that's happening. And um, at first glance, this is definitely a survivalist apocalypse type book. But then at about the halfway mark, we get like a really nice twist in it and I was sitting there thinking like I don't know why I was so surprised that that happened because this is Christina Henry like I had to know going in that it was going to be something darker capital S capital B and it was so it just took the most delicious horrifying turn and I loved it Christina Henry totally delivered it was great I ended up giving it four stars and I'll tell you why okay I really wanted the full story the big reveal I wanted all the information and Christina Henry really made it a point to not dig into the specifics here she created this character in a way that she was like I'm not a hero and I'm not gonna be a hero and that's hero behavior and that's not me. On the one hand, I really appreciated the candidness from the character that Christina Henry created in that she wasn't trying to be a hero, she was trying to survive and that was it and she was not going to jeopardize her survival by being stupid. So I did appreciate that, but it went hand in hand with we didn't get all of the story. So yeah, other than that, the representation here was so good. We had BIPOC representation, LGBTQ representation. It was very light because this was not like a romance novel or anything, but it was there. And also our main character, Red, has a prosthetic leg. So there was a lot of great representation in the book. The pace was incredible. I was never bored. And the storyline was really fun and unique with like a really slight nod to... Um, little Red Riding Hood. Like I said, if Christina Henry had just like delivered all the details to me so that I could like really get into what was happening, it would have gotten the five stars, but four stars is still pretty good. The next book I'm going to talk about is Grown by Tiffany Jackson. This was chosen for my book club and I was so excited because y'all know how much I love Tiffany Jackson. I also in the same breath hate Tiffany Jackson because she's burned me so many times, okay? I absolutely love her writing and she writes these just amazing POC BIPOC issues that just sing. Do you know what I mean? Like I just love the way that she writes and I love her characters and I love where her books end up going. But the last two times I have read Tiffany Jackson, she has ended the book on a massive cliffhanger that was literally unresolved and never talked about again. And so she's broken my heart a couple of times with these weird cliffhanger endings. And so I was hesitant to pick up this book, but it also had really good reviews. So our main character, Enchanted, is 16, 17, and she goes to a private school that her parents like can barely afford, but she secretly wants to be a singer. So she sneaks into an audition. Um, doesn't, it doesn't really go anywhere, but she gets to meet this like really famous, um, musician who takes a shine to her. Um, he's quite a bit older than her and he starts inviting her to like come sing with him and this kind of progresses and eventually she goes on tour with this much older 
I wouldn't say he's much older, but he's like in his late 20s, I think. And she's 17. So, yeah, she ends up going on tour with him. And this is her story of like getting out of a highly abusive relationship with him, basically. Um, the twists and turns of this, Tiffany Jackson is just unmatched with this kind of writing. Like, she really is a master writer. Like, she is amazing, but she breaks my heart all the time. Luckily, this book did not break my heart. Like, the way that she ended it, I loved. I wish she ended every one of her books the way that she ended this one because I absolutely loved the ending of this book. This book touches on a lot of issues. I thought it was really well done. It talks a lot about the music industry, about how young girls get um, basically trafficked into the music industry, how we cover up a lot of things because people are famous, um, lots of POC BIPOC issues. It was just amazing. And in the acknowledgement section, she made it very clear that this was not about R. Kelly, but she also said like F. R. Kelly a few times. <laughs> so I'm not, so, you know, according to Dif Tiffany Jackson, this is not about R. Kelly, but it's not not, right? Yeah. I ended up giving it four stars just because there were some little moments in there that uh, weren't for me. And, um, this really does put age gap dating under the microscope and it's a very like, um, wishy-washy subject. Like I, I talked to a few of my friends about it while I was reading it and we just, we couldn't come up with a clear cut answer about how we felt about age gap, especially when they come to underage people. And, um, yeah, I think this book is a great discussion piece. There's so much happening in here and Tiffany Jackson just blew me away. The last book I'm going to talk about today is Learn My Lesson by Katie Robert. Y'all, I finally did it. I finally read the second book. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> this is the second book in the Wicked Villain series and this focuses around Hercules, Meg, and Hades. So if you don't know what the Wicked Villain series by Katie Robert is, it's um, smutty retellings of Disney characters where the villain gets the girl, basically. So the first book was Desperate Measures and that's all about Jasmine and Jafar. And this book is about Hades, Hercules, and Meg. And about how they run the underworld, which is a club in the city that they live in. It was quite an ordeal for me to get this book. <laughs> so um, my library didn't have it. This is a very popular series. And um, I mean, the, the whole list on it was huge. I really wanted to read it this month because Show Me Sir, like, wasn't working out. And then The Kiss Thief by LJ Shin, that was also not working out. And I was like, if I don't read a smutty book this month, I think I might perish. So my friend ended up having this book. Yeah, but my friend lives like almost an hour away. So I had to drive all the way there just to get this book. But it was totally worth it, okay? This was just steamy to the ninth degree. I absolutely loved it. The creativity that Katie Robert was able to get in there with these three was just chef's kiss, okay? Never a dull moment. Now, there were... Um, in the review section, there were a lot of people that were saying, oh, the plot was boring. Oh, this. Oh, that. Okay. Um, sometimes smut is the plot. I'm just going to say that. And I think this book falls into that category. There was some really great door opening moments in this book for more books to come, which I think was part of the reason why we got this one so early. And... I just, I had a good time. I had a good time. And, um, if you know me, I'm just like a really big sucker for a good poly romance story. And this was it. Like this was a complicated love triangle that turned into like this almost sweet poly romance story that I just adored. Uh, but yeah, I'm a sucker for a poly romance. So this was right up my alley. I gave it five stars because the smut was just unmatched and I, I had such a good time. I had such a good time. I'm so glad 
I finally got to it and yes, without a doubt, I am going to continue this series. Whether I finish it in 2023 remains to be seen, but we're not giving up on it for sure. Okay, that's all I have for you guys today. That's all the books I read in January. And let me tell you, I have not even cracked into my February books yet. I haven't even put my holds on at the library. I don't know what February is going to look like for me. Um, work has slowed down momentarily. That doesn't really mean anything. We'll just see how it goes. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of excited for February. Things are kind of looking up. We're moving further into the year. And yeah, make sure you hit all the buttons down below so you know when I'm posting. I post every week and February has some exciting content coming up. So I hope you will join me in watching that and making that and being here. Whatever. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!